ladies and gentlemen, we are so excited to welcome you here to Log Cabin Village this morning. Uh, my name is Shay Navoy, the assistant site supervisor here. Um, you've already met our site supervisor, Rena Lawrence, who's back there at the gate and will wave. Everybody wave at Rena, she's wonderful. <laughs> We are both so excited um, to welcome you to the village for this momentous occasion. We are so honored to dedicate these two stopping stones as we remember the lives of Mr. Jefferson Walton and Miss Molly and acknowledge their unrecognized and uncompensated work and contributions to our community's history. Today we feel the weight of their stories as we stand in the shadow of the house which encapsulated their unpaid labor. However, we also feel the joyous resiliency of their lives as we approach Juneteenth, the end of their bondage, and the beginning of a new life of freedom. We are honored and humbled to share this space with an incredible slate of speakers and performers who will guide us in the uplifting and complex stories of Mr. Walton and Miss Molly. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Mayor Maddie Parker. Good morning, and of course, thank you to Shay and the staff here at Log Cabin Village for this Stopping Stones project and for allowing us all to gather here today on what is actually a pretty cool morning in June in Texas. We'll take it, right? Um, in all seriousness, these two markers by the Stopping Stones project are the first in Texas to acknowledge and memorialize the lives of enslaved people. Today, we pay tribute to their courage, their resilience, and the countless others who endured the hardships of slavery. The stopping stones before us serve as physical symbols representing the path walked by Jefferson Walton and Miss Molly and the countless others whose lives were impacted by slavery. These stones stand as a testament to their strength and a very important reminder that their stories must never be forgotten. As we begin the month of June, let us reflect on how Juneteenth is a pivotal moment in our nation's history, reminding us of the resilience and determination of those who fought against the injustices of slavery. And as we stand here today, let us reaffirm our commitment to building a more inclusive and equitable society that starts right here in Fort Worth. May these stopping stones serve as a very important reminder of the progress we have made as well as a call to continue our work toward a future where every individual is treated with dignity, respect, and fairness. Thank you all for joining us on such a significant occasion. May the Stopping Stones Dedication Ceremony inspire us to learn from the past, work towards a better future, and celebrate the enduring spirit of Juneteenth. It's now a pleasure of mine to get to introduce our next speaker, Ms. Brenda Sanders Wise. Brenda serves as the Executive Director of the Tarrant County Black Historical and Genealogical Society. And we're very thankful for all of her hard work across Fort Worth. Ms. Brenda, please join us. Thank you, Mayor Parker. On behalf of the Tarrant County Black Historical and Genealogical Society, which is led by uh, President Jimmy Walker, and his board of directors. We are so very happy and grateful to be part of the Log Cabin Village Stopping Stones Dedication Ceremony, celebrating the life and contributions of Jefferson Walton and Molly. I have a quote here, it says, the living owe it to those who no longer can speak to tell their story for them. And this is from a novel, The Issa Valley by Mislos. Remembrance and recognition of one's life, their work, and their impact on the history of their community or their state is so vital to our society. We as an organization can relate to the recognition of these individuals' contributions because we do so on a daily basis at the Lenore Rolla Heritage Center Museum, located at the historic South Side, 1020 East Humboldt Street where we for 46 years are still preserving the past in the present for the future, bringing history to life, whether good or bad, 
sharing the historical contributions of African Americans in Tarrant County, and expressing how they helped to shape a city once riddled with Jim Crow laws, but now are playing significant roles in local government and performing their civic duties without hesitation. As we take part in this ceremony, we are pleased to support this Stopping Stones project to truthfully report the past and shape the future of racial equity, harmony, unity, and most of all, respect, while helping the citizens of our great city not only to realize and recall the history of slavery, but you must be willing and you must be prepared to discuss the racial issues that we face today. We will also continue to increase our efforts as an organization to improve upon the legacy and vision of our founder, Mrs. Lenore Roller, by researching, collecting, preserving, and sharing our history with everyone. Thank you. And now, at this time, I would like to introduce a charter member of our organization the grandmother of Juneteenth, Nobel Peace Prize nominee, none other than Dr. Opal Lee. With her granddaughter, Ms. Dion Sims, Executive Director of Unity Unlimited. Good morning, young people. And you're all young people if you're not 96. So. <laughs> I bring you greetings. I, I'm so delighted. And the greetings to the Reverend Melvin. This is the um, step okay. stopping stones. Hey. They got me going so fast, I don't know what I'm doing after cotton picking time. So, Stepping Stones, thank you for allowing me to bring you greetings. And let me just say you need to know that on the south side of Fort Worth and at um, Rosedale and Evans, we're putting up the National Juneteenth Museum. I tell you, I'm so happy about it that I could do a holy dance, but the kids say when I try, I'm twerking, whatever that is. <laughs> I hope I get to give each one of you uh, one of these that talks about Opal's Walk for Freedom. That's going to be on the 19th of June. We're going to start at the plaza on Evans Avenue, and we're going to make two and a half miles and come back to that spot. Hope you'll come out and join us. And we've already had our breakfast of prayer, and it was spectacular. And we've had the Miss Juneteenth pageant already. And there are so many other things that we're doing. You know, Dion knows all about that stuff. But let me say how thankful I am that we've come this far. What we want to make sure we understand about the exhibit today is that history is doomed to repeat itself if we don't talk about it. And that's one of the neat things I like about Log Cabin Village is it gives us a peek into the past and adding this exhibit, these stopping stones to recognize Jefferson and Molly and all of the ins previously enslaved folks that are now being recognized with the national holiday of Juneteenth we can understand that freedom is for everyone. And all of our histories, our collective histories, is what made the U.S. what it is. Again, as Brenda said, good, bad, or ugly, we need to make sure we honor our history and not erase it. Because in erasing it, the future generations don't know where we've been, so they don't repeat the mistakes of our past. So this exhibit is 
unique in that it represents us here locally, but it's a collective small piece to the greater fabric which makes up the United States and the history. So we are a microcosm in the, stepping, in the stopping stones here to understand that there was slavery, but now we've got to move past it to understanding that we are not free yet until we're all free. And so Juneteenth represents freedom for all, and the history of the Stopping Stones will give the young people an understanding to ask, well, what does that stand for? And be told the history, be told, and that way they learn. So I thank Log Cabin Village for inviting Ms. Opal and I to be a part of the dedication because you can't erase what has already happened. Thank you. get one more round of applause for all of our speakers this morning. And now I would like to introduce a very special guest. Um, we actually have Miss Molly here with us this morning who would like to say a few words before we dedicate her stone. Miss Molly? Good day, everybody. How's Molly? Folk around here calls me Aunt Molly. Now, when the good people's here at the Long Cabin Village tells me I was coming all the way here to the year, what the years be? 2023. Mm. I get all kinds of feelings about it. Because you see, I was coming home here to this here house. This house is the Foster house. This where I lived most of my life. Let me tell you a story. When I was just uh, 16 year old, I left my birth home in the Mississippi in a covered wagon with Mr. Harry and Miss Martha Ann Foster. Mm. We traveled a many, and many sunrise and sunset before we got on down here to the Port Sullivan, Texas, over in the Milam County area. <laughs> mm. As I sit in the back corner of that there wagon, I think about my life. I scared. I was curious too, cause you see, them be the only white folks I've ever been with. I think so also that who I is and what I was gonna do and who I was gonna be, that I was ready to get on to the Texas so I could see. Oh, we travels from the Mississippi all the way to the Texas, and we passed by through many places. Can't remember most of them, but I remember that they all can saw. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Did you know that Miss My Angelo is from Arkansas? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, she come a long way on after I went on to be with the good Lord. <laughs> oh. I heard that she wrote a mighty good thing, so, mm -hmm. even though I never learned how to read to write, I remember as well, and they tells me about that that one, a woman's work. Mm. 
tear as it lack and be. <laughs> I always try to see the beauty in God inside of everything. This how it go. I got the children to tend, the clothes to mend, the floor to be mopped, the food to shop, the chicken to fry, the baby to dry, the company to feed, the garden to weed. I got the shirts to be pressed, the tots to dress, the can to be cut. I got to clean up this hut, then see about the sick in the cart to pick. Shine on me, sunshine. Rain on me, rain. Fall softly. Dew drops and cools my brow again. Storm, blow me from here with your fiercest wind. Let me float across the sky till I can rest again. Fall gently snowflakes, cover me with your white. Cold icy kisses and let me rest tonight. Sun, rain, curving sky, mountains, oceans, leaf, stone, star, shine, moon, glow. You're all I can call my own. Hmm. That there's some good writing right there. Mm-hmm. Now listen here. I was born in 1833. And I spent my whole life caring for the generations of cheering in this here foster house. And it ain't sat quite right well with me when I hears how some folk thinks of me. Like I was just a a servant with no name. I's more than just a servant in this here house. I, I care for the children. I care for the sick. I done the cooking and the cleaning. I nurse the youngin when missa is too tired for her day. I do the washing and the sorting and the folding. I keep the whole house here together year after year. I works from sun up to the sundown. Now I still takes time to take care of my own family. Now that there, that right there, that's that woman's work. So imagine how I must have felt when the good people's here at the log cabin village tells me they was bringing me all the way here to my home. <laughs> that brings me here because they said that they got something called a stopping stone. He never heard of such a thing. <laughs> but they tell me it's going to be planted right here in front of the house where I lived and died at 101 year old. They tell me it's going to be where generations to come can see and know my name. Because hmm. you see a woman in the 1800s such as myself, we get called by many of a name, so much so that history can't even find you. But that stone, it gonna tell them who I is. 
And I goes by the names that I grew up being called. Aunt Molly. That there's poem by Miss Maya Angelou. It says that the stars and the moon is all I can call my own. <laughs> Oh, my Lord, but now I've got something. I've got something else to call mine. Whew. I've got something else. <laughs> my, my, my. Thank you so much, Miss Molly. And now we have our other special guest, Mr. Jefferson Walton. Good day to y'all. My name is Jefferson Walton. And I'm so grateful to be here today with you. The folks from the Log Cabin Village bring me all the way from 1925 Branchville, Texas. Milan County. Most of you ain't never heard of such a place. But another famous fella that come from Branchville, just the same, uh, Arthur Bryant, you know, the Kansas City, Missouri barbecue fella. Yeah, he come from Branchville, just the same. Made his way to Missouri, where there's another famous fella I'm sure you heard of, James Mercer Langston Hughes, poet. <laughs> He wrote about lots of things. He wrote about the plight of the Negro. One piece that he wrote that seemed to be my voice or what I say to somebody who listened. I too sing America. I'm the darker brother. They send me to eat in the kitchen when company comes. But I laugh and eat well and grow strong. Tomorrow I'll be at the table when company comes. No one will dare say to me eat in the kitchen then. Besides, they'll see how beautiful I am and be ashamed. I, too, am America. <laughs> I was born in 1834, Howe County, Alabama, a time when America ain't think I was beautiful or a man at all. Oh, I tell you, Fanny, Willard Holland, sure enough thought I was beautiful. So much so, she agreed to marry me in 1860. <laughs> she gave me 13 cheerings and 66 years of love that no man could ever take away from me. We started the family right away. Let's see, first come James, Jeffy, Walter, William, Fanny, Lulu, Mary, David, Bethania, Walton, Ivory, Addie, Isaac. <laughs> Ooh, hard to believe I can still recall all their names. Lord knows I called them all sorts of things coming up. <laughs> but it means something for you good folks after all these years to hear their names. When folks see a photograph of me, all they see is an enslaved man. That's all. But I was a laborer, farmer. <laughs> I could work that Texas saw like I was a magic. Plants that healed our bodies. Food that made us strong. Fabric for the clothes that we needed. And fabrics for houses I couldn't even live in. But I did all those things because I was a farmer and I has got a name. So imagine how glad I was when the good folks at the log cabin village bring me all the way to, what year is it again? <laughs> Woo, good Lord, 2023. Well, they got what they call a stopping stone they bring me here for. I can't recall what it is. I never heard of such a thing. But they say 
It's going to be planted for generations to come. Everybody that comes through here will see my name. Jefferson Walton. It's going to be planted like them crops I used to grow. <laughs> I guess that poet fella wasn't wrong after all. They will see how beautiful I am. I too am America. Thank you so much. And now it is my great pleasure and excitement to welcome Ms. Sharan Goodspeed Keaton uh, to uh, take it away. <laughs> Lift every voice and sing to earth and heaven ring ring with the harmonies of liberty let our rejoicing rise high as the the listening skies let it resound loud as the rolling sea sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of a new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. Let us march on till victory. is well. All right, I think that needs one more round of applause. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, and if we could also get one more round of applause for our speakers and our incredible actors, Kenya Brown and J.R. Bradford. <laughs> Thank you all so much for sharing your wisdom and talents and time and words with us today on this special occasion. Uh, we have so many people who supported this effort that we want to take a moment to thank. Uh, first off, thank you to artist Paul Growald for creating this project and hand stamping the stones, and to Sophia Babbitt, Director of Operations and Engagement Arts Fund Stopping Stones, for guiding us through this process. We also want to thank all of our wonderful, incredible, amazing partners in this program, the Tarrant County Black Historical and Genealogical Society Incorporated, United, United, ah, Unity <laughs> Unlimited, DVA Productions Incorporated, Xenia Roastery, the City of Fort Worth's Diversity and Inclusion Department, and the Office of Communications and Public Engagement. Also, a huge shout out to Ms. Karen Stumer, Public Education Program Coordinator for the Park and Recreation Department, who made sure that this day went off without a hitch. 
She brought us some really good weather today, y'all. Let's thank Karen. This has been a huge effort, and we are so grateful for all of your support and so grateful for all of you who woke up on this humid Saturday morning to come out and honor Mr. Jefferson Walton and Miss Molly. I hope that you will all join us uh, for a reception in the village immediately following this presentation. We have some light refreshments, and Justin McLaughlin and his team from Xenia Roastery have some delicious locally roasted and brewed coffee available for y'all. Uh, we have free admission all day, <laughs> so we hope that you'll take the time to explore the village, talk to our incredible historical interpreters, and visit the booths out back for our partners to learn more about all of the incredible work that they are doing here in Fort Worth. Uh, we will have the stones on display in the building, uh, so if you'd like to get a closer look at them uh, before they are permanently um, installed next week. So thank you once again for joining us, and we hope to see y'all out back. Thank you so much. Yay.